themselves know they are shallow. They don't know anything about God. And there are those who claim to know, but they don't know. They will preach how powerful prayer is they've never prayed. They will tell you the mystery, all the mysteries about fasting. But the day you sleep in the same room with the person, you realize that he doesn't know what fasting is. There are people talking about in the realm of the spirit, in the realm of the spirit. They have never entered there before. They have never entered there before. They don't know what it is. There are people who assess it. Their mouths are closed. One time I had a vision. And a man came to me and brought a form. And on top of the form was some initials. You told me it is meaning non-disclosure agreement. NDA. On top of it was written. Then he told me sign. Then immediately in the spirit realm, I signed. Then I the moment I woke up, I spoke to the mercy that what's the meaning of NDA in terms of maybe partnership or business or whatever it is? What's the meaning? Then he told me it means non-disclosure agreement. I went to check on Google, it said non-disclosure agreement. So there are the, the people God really do business with. Sometimes he shuts your mouth because not everything he will show you that you have to say. And I saw it, he made me sign non-disclosure agreement. That means I'm coming to take you into some realms. It's between me and you. So sometimes the people that talk about realms, they may never have access there. Because when you access, sometimes the condition around it is that shut your mouth. Apostle Paul said, I went into the third heavens and I saw things that are unspeakable. That means he saw it, but he, was, he didn't have the permit to neither write it or preach it. He died with it. There are realms that God can take you to. It's between you and him. Only your life can teach it. Your mouth must not teach it. So those who are discerning can look at your life and learn the message God is giving. But to you, God will tell you, don't open your mouth. They talk about giving. They, they don't know what it is. But the day you find them preaching sacrifice, you may think that he can sacrifice even his kidney. But such people don't even know what giving is about. Those who talk about prayer don't know prayer. Most of the time, those who talk about all kinds of facet parts of God and you can go into God and do this, they don't know him. One time, a man of God told me, why do you preach from Genesis 1, Genesis 2? Why do you have so many messages and revelations around that part? I told him it's simple. One time I was in a seven days fasting and the Lord took me to the Garden of Eden. If God be God, I saw the woman, I saw Eve. If God be God, I saw the tree. If God be God, I saw that serpent. So I won't have that encounter and not really have a message around chapter 1, chapter 2. It won't happen. Because it is not just a word to me. It became flesh. Those who have seen God, when you see them, you see I can't finish talking to you without directing you to the path of righteousness. I can't. He said, Mark, nothing moves me. Your money will never move me until I know your intimacy with God. The people I sleep and want to be like are men who have seen everything but still fear God. Ah, I meditate on them. What is it about these men? Men of God that piss me off are people who flaunt their sources to attract me to follow them. I have no business with him. The Bible says that such are men that are not rich towards God. You can deceive me with your grammar, but when I see Luke 12, I will know what life is. For life is not in the abundance of things that a man possesses. He said it's not in. He said that he would take, I would take your life from you. Then you will know what these things will be for. And he said that such are men who are not rich towards God. That means if you live on earth, your currency for living must be called God. If you tell me you are rich in the spirit, if you tell God you are rich, he will, show, he will let you show him the measure of himself that you are. If you produce dollar to him, you have already failed. That's why Jesus came and he said, I came to preach to the poor. You don't preach to poor, you give them money. That means the definition of poverty in heaven is different from the definition of poverty on earth. When Jesus was writing a letter to the church of Spine, look at what he told them. He said that you are poor, yet you are rich. That means physically you are poor, but in the spirit, church of Spina, you are rich. But he got to the church of Laodicea. And he said that you say you are rich and have no need of anything, but you don't know that you are poor. There is a devil who fears nothing but God. 
If you don't have God, you're on his filter platter. He will deal with you. You are going to pray that God give me a shed mantles. I want to have their kind of love. I want to have their kind of commitment. I want to experience their kind of power. I want to have their kind of intimacy. I want to. Sometimes I sit back and I want to think through the mentality of Joseph. Who was this boy? I want to think through the mentality of David. Who were these men? God just told Abraham, leave your father's house. Go, go. Go to a land I will show you. And Abraham followed. He went. If anybody asks him, I don't know where I'm going, but God said I should go. What kind of men were these? You have just 70 to 100 years to live on earth. And this is a period for you to know God as you should. So that you meet him one day. And explain to him the aspect of him you rejected that you didn't know. If you want to be like this modern world, you'll be lost in it. You must have a mark that this world doesn't have. There must be something about you that is higher than them. If all you are is the trend of this world, you don't have a place. So sometimes when God wants to distinguish you, he revisits you with some of the ancient men. The Bible said those days, even their world was not worthy of them. So they dwelled in caves. Those are the mantles that we need to stand out in our generation when a man can stand and say that as i stand in the presence of the lord there will be no rain what is the desires of today's generation it's not my desire i'm looking for something that sometimes if i'm quoting reference it is only bible i can see it i'm a man not looking for manifestation i'm a man waiting that god give me the grace to walk with you what i want to deal with god over i've never i've not seen some here among my contemporaries, I've, I've not seen some. The kind of commitment I want to have with God, I've not seen some. Can God call me out right now and tell that disappear for 40 days and come back? Don't inform any family member. If I can do that, then I'm catching up a little. But this generation civilization and modernization will not allow that experience of those ancient men. But it will take a desirous heart a yearning heart to have that privilege when the council of heaven meets and they are mentioning churches do they mention grace mountain or we are lost somewhere will your name be mentioned in the days of job if you were there the mantles of the ancient men were not just calling down fire they were men who sold their lives they had no life if you ask them, show me your life, you tell them, I don't have it, I've delivered it to God. They woke up pursuing God. They slept pursuing Him. David says, seven times I'll praise you, three times in a day. The Bible said, Abraham dwelled in tents because he saw a city. He said, Abraham saw your day and rejoiced. And the Lord appeared to Abraham. And the Lord appeared to Moses. And the Lord appeared to Samuel. What happened to our day? Why is he not appearing? And some of you, all you are looking for as a Christian is to break through. That's powerful. It's part of it. But in his appearing tangibly around you, will give you a breakthrough your mind has never thought of. Today, someone was telling me that an enemy of their family, life, an enemy of their family looked at them, even in the, the presence of security people, looked at them and said, I have taken you to the topmost of Juju. He said, yet you are refusing to die. He said, in the presence of sin. He said, the last one I took you to that you are not dead. I'm sure because of the money I was asked to pay. He said, all because of that small boy you follow him as a pastor. Life. Be hungry for God. And he will defend you at your blind side few months ago i told the person somebody has taken you to juju he didn't know until this time there is a way that we can be in the presence that the secrecy of men are revealed if i get the ancient mantle on me physically i'm a small boy but spiritually <laughs> you know the grace for salvation is two thousand and something years it's older than every man before that the grace for prosperity has been before the foundation of the world 
So the grace of prosperity, brother, is more than 6,000 years. If God tells you I'll prosper you and that grace come, no devil can stop you. We don't pursue ourselves. We keep pursuing that which is older. So when you are walking about, you are 25, but what is operating in you is 85. So your convictions are older than you. Your message is older than you. Your wisdom and the way of doing things is older than your age. Why? Because you have bargained for an ancient mantle.